So that's a quick introduction to diffusion limited aggregation. Of the different models for uh, fractal generation that we've covered in this unit, DLA is certainly the most realistic from a physical point of view. It can be used to explain or help to understand the fractal forms that one sees um, for a whole range of systems that grow via accretion, basically where things stick together, where you have some sort of random walking in and then particles stick to a surface or stick to each other. So it's a pretty flexible model. And it actually applies to more situations still. And I don't want to get into this in too much detail because it's a little, again, farther afield than I want to go in the course. But I do want to mention very briefly that it turns out that the mathematics of diffusion is similar to the mathematics of electrostatics. So what I mean by that is when you have a diffusing system um, and you have some sort of dendritic, dendritic structure, those fingers, you could calculate the probability that a wandering particle sticks here versus the probability that a wandering particle sticks here or here or here. And that mathematically turns out to be the same problem as calculating the um, electric potential around um, an object shaped like this that's held at a fixed potential. So what that means is, is that one can see these sorts of DLA type phenomena, these dendritic fingering sorts of behaviors in electrostatic phenomena as well as diffusive phenomena. So electric deposition of materials is one such example. Um, dielectric breakdown in materials is another. So um, there are a wide range of physical processes that are described by DLA or DLA-like models. So in any event, stepping back a little bit, DLA, diffusion-limited aggregation, is another example of a random process. The particles are moving in at random, so it's a random process that leads to uh, an intricate fractal. In the next unit, we'll see how to calculate uh, the dimension for fractals like one gets from DLA.